in this section, we're going to finish off our um, sort of automating our builds, right? In this case, we're going to automate the, the deployment, or I guess deployment is the right word, of our Terraform configurations. Previously, we were only executing them locally on a machine and then um, doing it manually, right? So, um, right. So, and then if you remember, there was actually two different Terraform configs we had. We had one early on that we did for the network, and then we did a separate one um, for the application itself. So we're going to keep the separation. Um, the idea is, you know, the network may be sort of managed by a different group than your application team, right? So we kind of conceptually have two different configurations. Um, but, um, okay, so let's go through this. The first thing I did was, um, and again, you can read up this on your own, but previously we were storing our Terraform state locally on our mach my machine. And now that we're going to work more as a team, and we're going to put things, um, you know, basically do like code build and whatnot. We want to use remote state storage for both, um, both projects, right, or both configs. And this amounts to, uh, there's, if you just Google this, uh, look up Terraform remote state storage, you end up on this page. And this basically walks through the process, and I'm not going to do this on screen, but basically goes through the process of creating a Terraform account, creating workspaces in Terraform, and then pushing your state there. So that's what this is. Um, I think to see this, um, what I'll do is if I log in, I think I'm logged in. Um, that's not where I want to be. Let's see. Terraform. I log in. You can see that I've created, I've created an organization called To Do's or Us. And in that organization, I have two workspaces, one for the uh, network and one for the app, right? Um, so that's essentially what you'll end up with, too, if you do this yourself. Okay. Um, again, you can read up on that on your own. Um, the next thing I did that was kind of semi-related to this, once I got the workspaces onto the network, um, what I wanted to do, and I'll just look at the code by example here. Um, I guess I'll, I'll plan ahead here. So I used a feature in Terraform called remote state. And I'll just, I'll, t I'll do it by example. But uh, if you Google this again, you'll find, you look up Terraform remote underscore state. It's another kind of data resource or data item you can um, configure in your um, Terraform config. Let me, let me show you what it looks like and how I'm using it in this very particular case. So what I did was once I moved both of, both the, uh, Terraform configurations, or I think they're called workspaces, to being backed by their state. Oh, one other thing before I forget. I did do one special thing. Um, because when you configure one of these, let's see if I can find it. Okay. When you configure these remote setups here, there are two different options for where you run your execution. So the state is being stored in the cloud, in Terraform cloud. But when you actually execute Terraform, you can run it locally or remotely. Default is it'll run inside of their cloud. The problem is, in some cases, I think in the app version, we're actually pulling files from the local file system, right? Which won't play well with the cloud solution, right? So I set both of them to local. So they're both running from wherever you're running the command line tool from which will be fine because we'll be using code build and we'll, we'll actually be running the commands from code build, not our local machine. So I set both of them to local. Okay, so that's that's a sidebar there. Um, okay, I just remembered that. That was kind of random, but um, so back to the main point. So let's talk about this remote state. So I'm gonna minimize this and I'm gonna look at the code for, this is the network code, right? And if you remember right, the network code created things like the, the VPC, the subnets, like the net kind of networking things, right? Thus, net. Um, so one of the outputs that I've created here is just the VPC ID itself. So it's outputting VPC ID and it's getting its value from whatever the VPC ID is, right? So now what's interesting is you can actually now go into, now look at the previously, 
Let me go into the, the application version now. Get ahead of myself. So in the application version now, this is garbage. Well, I'll clean up stuff later. Um, if I look at main, or actually variables. Okay, so one of the things you'll notice here is uh, this is app. Okay, oh no, I'm wrong. This is not a variable. I'm sorry, get myself confused. Um, if I look under main, right, so this is what the point is here. So it's not a variable, it's actually a data source. And um, you see that I've added this section here called Terraform Remote State. And it's referring to the, the To Do's or Us, which is my organization, and the workspace is To Do Us.net. So that's the cloud formation. That's the, not cloud formation, this is too many cloud words. This is Terraform's cloud, right? My implement, my, 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 workspace up there essentially, right? And what this allows me to do now is to refer to state values out of that state. And you can see here, um, I use it because I pass it to ECS. I pass VPC ID, is data Terraform remote state, right? And then in there, I well basically then I use that as a variable there. And the point there is, before I had to look it up from a data, based on some tag I was using. And now instead, I'm not doing that. I'm actually just reading it straight from, so right right from the other Terraform. So this is kind of a cross workspace linkage, right? Or this, this workspace or this config now is referring to something into an entirely different config. So it's, it's being used trivially here, but I expect over time as I add more and more features to the network that maybe this depends on I'll take advantage of that uh, cross-config cross linking. Okay, that's it for that. Um, that was the next change. Um, then I, you know, once I had that all working locally, right, I was still building locally. The goal now was to start thinking about getting this to build in the cloud. And um, so I'll go to my other screens. So I did this one. I did this one. Uh, we talked about I talked about that one. Okay, so now we're back into AWS. So the next thing I did was I went ahead and created two code commit repositories, and I just pushed the code there. Nothing special, right? And that the, the goal I'm trying to do is I'm trying to automate this build. So I need to create a build step, right? Now, usually when you're doing build steps, you need to create those build YAML files. So that's the next thing I did. So let me do the network one first. Hang on, this is bothering me. I had created a stuff file before. Oh no, I'll do it later. Okay, to do's or us net. Okay, let's look at the code here. So the next thing I did was, uh, this is new, this build spec. Now, what this is, this is, a, this is, a, this is being, this is to be used by AWS code build, right? And these are the commands it's going to run basically to do my Terraform work. So the first thing I had to do is install Terraform. So the first, um, yeah, and, and just so you know, these repos are available in the, um, so you can find that, this detail there. Um, you can see I download uh, Terraform, I unzip it, um, I run this script, we'll look at this in a second, creating a config, I initialize Terraform, I do a plan, right? I do apply, and then I do an auto approve, which means it'll just run it through without having me say, have to type in yes, right? Um, now the script I created was a fairly short one. Um, what I needed to do was I stored it as an environment variable, the Terraform token, which is something you'll do when you, when you set up um, Terraform um, cloud, you need to have credentials to like store your state in Terraform cloud. And so it's, I'm storing it in a, in a build environment. We'll have a TF underscore token. And this is writing a file in the right place, which is your root directory of whoever's running the command 
you know, dot Terraform RC. This is how Terraform keeps track of who you are and why you can publish to that remote state. Okay, so that's what that command's doing, right? I do essentially the same thing, exact same thing for both app and net. So I'll just follow one of these along. So we'll just follow along. So now that I got all that in place, I actually um, then go into code build, right? And build projects. And you'll see I have two, one for each, right? And I go through the exercise of creating a build project, basically picking all the defaults, right? Um, nothing special there. And in here, let's see, there's one setting that's important is the environment variables. So when you go through this, the only, the only essentially non-default thing we're going to do is add in an environment variable. So you can see here, TF token, and then the environment variable. And that, and that's and then basically you, that's that's the next step, right? And then the last thing you do, once you get that done, you test it, make sure the build works, right? And then the last step is you can go in to create a pipeline. And again, that this one's even simpler. Um, you basically just pick the repo, pick the build step, and then you're done. So I'll have one for each. And then I can show you what a, a typical build looks like. Um, so if I look at the build projects, I'll look at the last run of net, for example. Right, so the build history, um, you can look at the output, right? And you can see it downloading the, somewhere in here, okay, here's curl running, run, installing Linux, un unzipping it, um, then it's doing the crate config, then it's running Terraform init, somewhere running Terraform a plan, right about here. And then it's run Terraform apply. And then of course, you see this is, I was just testing this. So there's no changes in this case, right? Um, right. Of course, you can see the output there, the VPCID. That's what's being used by the um, other config, right? Now there's one settings, one bit of business about the, um, go back to my command line here. Look at the app real quick. This one, I actually got stuck on this one for a minute. So if you remember, which I barely remembered, um, in the in the um, app version, we actually had some variables that we had set up. These are essentially things that were configured outside of Terraform that we needed to refer to in our configuration. Things like the audience. I didn't. These are cognito things. These are actually all co are cognito things, actually, right? Um, Hindsight probably should have done Cognito instead of Terraform. That would have solved this problem, but oh well. Um, so these variables needed to be pushed into the, um, yeah, these variables need to be pushed into the um, build process. And I don't really want these variables like in a file. Usually you don't want to store these kind of secrets or semi-secrets in, um, in like a repo. So what you had to do was, I look at the app build, build project, build projects, look at app, edit, uh, environment, and if I scroll down, additional configurations, you will also see, in addition to TF token, you can actually pass a TF underscore var underscore and then whatever your variable is, and then you can define your variables just like just like that file I showed you, right? And here are all those variables now. And so, uh, and one key thing here, just so you know, um, anyway, yeah. So that's basically the one, the one little tricky thing here that I was mentioning here is is it in this case you have to escape the double quotes when you paste it here. This is JSON, and the, well, if you just paste it without the back the escaping the quote. It gets it basically screws this up. It doesn't treat it as JSON, so you have to escape your double quotes in the values here. Okay, well that's.
kind of a whirlwind tour of essentially what we did was we took our manual build process or m configuration deployments of Terraform and moved them to an online state first where the state is all stored inside a Terraform cloud. Then we moved the actual build processes into basically code build. And, and now and I can make changes in the code, push it to the repository, code build will run, and my changes get applied. So that's it. Thank you.